Today I will be installing a NEMA 1430 outlet. Originally, my garage was wired for two of the NEMA 1450 outlets, one in the rear and one in the front. I found out most of the time I just use 24 amps when charging. I'm also interested in adding a mini split HVAC system to the garage, which uses about 20 amps. Here I'm in my local hardware store, and I want to show you the difference in wire gauges. The lower the number, the thicker the wire conductors, and therefore the lower the resistance for electricity. By the way, AWG stands for American Wire Gauge, and that's the usual method for measuring wires. The Romex wire on the left is an 8 gauge, and the one on the right is a 6 gauge, which is normally used for NEMA 1450 outlets. Notice that the conductors are larger on the right. This is the installation page for a NEMA 1430 outlet from Tesla. Note they recommend at least a 10 gauge wire. So for a NEMA 1430 outlet, which has less amps, you can use a 10 or 8 gauge wire, such as this Romex cable. Comparing the 6 and 8 gauge wires on the right to this 10 gauge on the left, that's quite a significant difference in the amount of copper in the conductors. For my garage, I already had a run of wire that my electrician installed when the garage was built last year, and it happens to be 6 gauge wire. Here are the items that I used for installation. This is a 2 pole, 30 amp, 240 volt breaker that fits in my electrical subpanel, which happens to use the Eaton BR standard and is compatible with copper or aluminum wiring. Notice on the side panel that it shows the torque requirements for wires connected to it. 14 to 10 gauge uses 20 inch pounds, 8 gauge uses 25 inch pounds, 6 to 4 gauge uses 27 inch pounds. And this is the torque I will be using. Also notice that it supports 60 and 75 degrees Celsius wire. On the back are the heavy-duty screws to hold the hot wires to the breaker. One other thing to notice is that there is a wire cutting guide here that shows how much of the wire insulation needs to be removed before attaching it to the connector. Next up is the outlet itself. This is a Pass and Seymour Legrand NEMA 1430. It supports 75 Celsius copper or aluminum wire. When installing the outlet, make sure that the ground is facing up, which is the round hole shown here. On the back are four screws that hold the wires in place. On the side, you can see the hefty screws that hold down the wires. There it is, also labeled with the green for ground, white for neutral, and the other two are for the two hot leads. This is the cover plate that fits over the outlet. I have noticed that the NEMA round outlets can have different diameters. They can range anywhere from two to two and a half inches. This one happens to be 2.1 inches. Lastly, I have a new outlet box to replace the older one. I like this one since it has a built-in wire cable clamp. This will attach to the wood stud with four screws into the metal bracket. Here are the tools I used, a flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers, a variety of pliers, a multi-gauge wire stripper, I will be using the six gauge setting, and a torque screwdriver. I mentioned that this outlet will be on the center of the rear wall of the garage, First, I had to remove some of the pro slat slat wall from this area. I'm also doing this for two reasons, marking the location for the new HVAC wall unit, as well as replacing this outlet. I then removed a section of the drywall where the outlet is located. I cut it along the studs. When I reinstall the piece, it will fit back in nicely and have good support. I also folded the insulation out of the way while working on the outlet. By the way, this wire has the circuit breaker turned off in the electrical panel, so I don't have to worry about shock hazards. First, I insert the Romex wire sleeved cable through the side of the outlet box. 
leave at least six inches of the wire outside of the box to allow attaching the connectors to the outlet. Inside the box, I use a screwdriver to tighten the clamp down onto the wire jacket. Don't clamp on bare wires. Always make sure a little of the jacket is showing through the clamp. Once the box is in the right position, I will screw it into the wood stud. And now I'm going to measure and then trim the wires to length. I'll use some blue painter's tape to mark where it needs to be cut. Here is the wire stripper and I'm going to use the setting for 6 gauge. Here's the outlet. It has a little gauge on top that shows how much of the insulation needs to be removed from the wire. And I'll mark it with some blue painter's tape. And then use the wire stripper to trim it off. Do this for all three wires. Loosen the screws on the back of the outlet. Now the wires are ready to attach to the outlet. The bare wire is ground, the white wire is neutral, and the red and black wires are hot. Don't forget to orient the outlet so that the ground is facing up. Now I'm going to attach the bare ground wire to the outlet. Use the screwdriver to tighten it. Next, I'm going to insert the white neutral wire, but first I'm going to bend it so that it fits into the outlet better. And now I'm going to screw it in. Likewise, I'm also going to bend the red and black hot wires so that they attach to the outlet better and I'm able to bend the wires into the outlet when I'm done. Here I'm attaching the black wire first. And now the red wire. Once all the wires are connected, use the torque wrench at the 27 pound inch setting and tighten the screws until it clicks for each of the four wires. Now carefully bend the wires so that the outlet will fit into the box. Try to keep the wires clear of each other as much as possible. Once inside, insert the four screws and tighten them through the outlet to the box. For the Romex wire cable to the left of the outlet, I will drive a staple into the wood stud to keep it from moving, which is 12 inches away from the outlet box according to code. Before starting the project, I will turn off power to the garage sub panel with this disconnect switch box on my house. The next part of the installation requires replacing the 50 amp breaker that used to be in the box. Take off the electrical panel cover with four screws and place it aside. Here is the inside of the sub panel. I have breakers for lights, 15 amp outlets, refrigerator and future HVAC on the left side. And on the right side are the two 50 amp breakers. The one on the top is the one I'm going to remove. I'm going to loosen the two screws and remove the red and black wires. With the wires pulled out, I can now 
pop out the breaker. And here is the new 30 amp breaker that is going to replace it. It slides into a groove on the right side and then you just snap it in on the left side. Reinsert the black and red wires into the openings. And now use the screwdriver to tighten them in. Back again, we have the torque wrench screwdriver set to 27 pound inches. And we'll torque in these two screws. On the left side is the ground bar. This is where you would attach the bare wire. On the right side is the neutral bar where you attach the white wire. And at this point, I can put the cover back onto the panel. Going back to the outlet area, I will untuck the insulation and push it back down to where it's supposed to go. I will place the drywall back over the outlet area. And I'll use some blue painter's tape to hold it down while I put some drywall screws in to secure it. Since I'm putting slat wall over this, I don't have to worry about remudding or sanding this area. And now I've put in a bunch of drywall screws that should keep it in place. After reinstalling the slat wall, you can see that the outlet is now flush with the outside. I can now place the cover plate over the outlet and use four screws to install it. I'll place a new label onto the panel showing the updated breakers and outlets. This is my Gen 2 mobile connector that came with my 2018 Model 3. I removed the NEMA 1450 plug that attaches to the top of the unit. Comparing the two plugs side by side, the biggest difference is that the NEMA 1430 has a right angle shaped blade versus straight on the NEMA 1450. Now I'll plug in the new NEMA 1430 plug adapter into the unit, press it in firmly, and now we can test it out. I use a bicycle water bottle holder to support the mobile connector. I place that on the slat wall. And then I plug it in. And along with that, a cable holder next to it. Now we'll take the cable off the holder and test it out on the car. Plug it in the charge, and let's go in the car and see what the charging looks like. Within the first few seconds, we can see that the amps are ramping up and it reaches 24. This can be adjusted on the lower left-hand side. I've been charging my car for over three and a half years now, and most of the time, I don't need to charge any faster than 24 amps provides. I do also have the NEMA 1450 in the front of the garage attached to a Gen 1 UMC that will provide 40 amps if I need it in an emergency. Here you can see that the ambient garage temperature is 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29.4 degrees Celsius. Using the temperature probe, the plug is around 85.6 to 7 degrees Fahrenheit or 29.8 degrees Celsius. 
just barely above room temperature while charging. The center unit comes in between 91.6 to 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 33.1 to 38.3 degrees Celsius, depending on where the sensor is placed. Fairly normal. And that about wraps it up for my installation of a NEMA 1430 outlet in my garage. This is an informational video. Codes may be different in your local area. Please follow them and use a professional electrician if you are not comfortable with doing a project like this. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. I'll see you in the next video.